what are some of the ways that designers can maybe start to build better relationships with people that at the moment they sit across the room from and feel like they have nothing in common and actually don't want to start building a relationship with? Right. Yeah, I mean, I, I so I think there's sort of three things, um, I guess, sort of three traps that I've fallen into that I would I would sort of um, always keep in mind from my experience of, of getting them so sort of horribly wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I think, one, as I said before, I think there's a big thing around language, mm. right? You know, the design community, particularly the user, user experience aspect of the design community is steeped in, in somewhat esoteric language. You know, right. we refer to methodologies and tools and trends and things in a way that is, frankly, it's impenetrable for people mm. outside of it. Um, and when we are kind of in our own bubbles, you know, like design reviews and you know, or podcasts or, or articles or things like that, that's fine. You know, go for it. Why not? That's mm. great. But when you are trying to communicate to to someone in sales or marketing or support or the exec team or whatever, I think you have to adjust your language. I think you have to drop those terms and and think about things from the perspective of of what the business needs mm. and what those kind of those kind of hot terms are around that business. Um, I think the second thing is, and you know, I, I you know, I certainly have have fallen into this trap is. I think that there is a common behavioral pattern for a design team to to isolate itself right. inside a business and and you know by either putting kind of a badge on it and saying this is our team and we've got a we've got a, like a logo or do it like physically if you have a workspace people putting barriers up mm. and or you no know, this is our special space and you don't come into it or by you know even just sort of siphoning off bits of like the server space whatever it is i think that is really problematic um and i and i and i recently it's not recently it's about a year ago i was in a i was in a london office of a very very big tech company and they were very excited about their new offices and i went to see the design team and they were in a glass box <laughs> And they were very pleased with their glass right. box, but you couldn't, your pass couldn't get you in there unless you were part of the design team. Wow. And they thought that was brilliant. And I just thought it was the worst thing I've ever seen. That's wild. Yeah. Because talk about like immediately isolating yourself. Mm. And when I spoke to people who weren't in the design team, I tell you, they had nothing good to say about that whatsoever. <laughs> it just seems on the outside, it just doesn't seem like a good look, right? It's, I, I, I can understand to an extent of, particularly when design was a fledgling, um, well, I guess, got to talk more specifically, things like user experience design, digital product design, mm. were a more fledgling field and we wanted to build a sense of community yes. and um, it kind of makes sense in in that phase of of an industry to be like, look, we, we, we need to have a place where we can go and have a community of practice and build a language that works for us. It feels like we're beyond that point now, right? That we are mature enough that we can kind of get beyond yeah. beyond that i would hope so i would hope so yes i think that unless you're starting a completely fresh team in an organization that's never had a design team i don't see the need for it i don't see the need. but you know the, then i just sort of wanted to mention the third thing that's in there as well is that you put any um designer into a new organization with a new market or a new a new a new, a new product they're taking on Straight out of the gate, I've, you know, I see this every time. They'll just go straight in and they'll start going, okay, I want to do some user interviews. Mm. I want to know what the competitors are doing. I'm going to do some heuristics. I'm going to look at the data. I want to get all this data. I want to interview all these. And they just consume everything they can about the users and the users' needs. And they build all this material up and they build up their understanding. When did you find out about the business? Mm. When did you go and, like, what, why didn't you go and sit with the sales team? Yeah. Why didn't you spend a day listening to calls at the call center? Why didn't you ask if you can shadow an exec mm. for a day? Like, where, like, do you know how profitable? Are you profitable? Do you know that? Like, what what's the most financially important thing to happen in the business this year? Yeah. Nothing. Like, the designers, and that's so weird, isn't it? And those are it those are the three things which I think I've I've failed on. Like, uh, you know, like, and I learned the lessons along the way. I, you know, I 
I just tried to tell, I tried to think that actually if I can get people around the business to talk about user experience, that would be the best method. Mm. And it wasn't. And when I learned to speak their language, that changed things. And I thought if I built little kind of micro sub brands for my teams, that would be the best thing to do. And it wasn't. It isolated us. And when I just sort of got into an organization, I just said, I don't want to hear about the business. I just want to hear about the users. Mm. It wasn't the right thing to do because I didn't understand what was necessary. Yeah. 